who are like king. You totally rock. You see, I'm thank you for all your work. Oh, my God. I used to get pissed off at first. And if I really listen to what you say, you learn from the show how to treat a man right. I'm like, hey, if you got a problem with me, I'll sleep with you. It's what I've written law. They're hookers. I think you're sweet. I believe really dude. Well, like, then good. I'm glad to hear he's doing his job. No, I'm not a nice guy. I'm in the business to make as much money as I can in as short a period of time as I can do it. What do you offer to hold hers? Once you let a woman take away your balls, uh, she'll start doing other things to you. I, I, there are certain situations where you squeak by it. I hope he knows what you mean by an open relationship. Because if someone told me I'd open a relationship, I'd be out tonight. Should we be honoring people for the wards and stuff or having like 14, 15, 16 kids? Should we be doing that? That would be the same as giving me award, an award for uh, how many women I've banked. I mean, why not? What, 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 I want the award. I'm very sexy, voluptuous woman. So, so fat. I'm not 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 fat. I'm From Los Angeles, it's Flash Friday. Oh, I hate it. Oh. And, now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. By down our toll free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by The Girl Next Door. It opens today in theaters. These are the people who are providing the $500 in cash to a random caller that makes it on the air this hour. $500 in cash from The Girl Next Door, the ultimate guy fantasy. Drawing Alicia Cuthbert from 24. It's in theaters today. Thank you for tuning in on this first Flash Friday of 2004. How exciting is this? God damn it. And it's the first Flash Friday they've had in Dallas uh, in a very long time because we were banished to late night purgatory on the radio station Dallas. And uh, so people were not able to turn on their headlights and get flashed. Like they can uh, right now, right now. Turn on your headlights, guys. Turn them on. God, we haven't done Flash Friday in Dallas since, what, spring of 02? It's been a long time. Turn your headlights on, boys. Turn them on now. And ladies, if you see a guy with the headlights on, or a chick with the headlights on for that matter, show them what you got. Show them. It's easy. Just lift up your top and thrust them out the window. Let us see your breasts. That's what we want to see. We do. And if you uh, see a nice rack, uh, let us know. We're looking for our first report from Baltimore and uh, now our first report from Dallas. So uh, if uh, you see a nice rack, call us here toll free at 1 800 5800 Tom. It's 1 800 5800 866. And of course, on Friday on Tom Likas Show, it's wide open telephones. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have discussed. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, long as you're absolutely fascinating. You're not fascinating, we kick your ass the hell on the phone. It's that simple. By the way, boys, don't call up and be a little girly man and uh, try to uh, report that you're looking to see breasts. You haven't gotten flashed, anything like that. We know, we know. You don't have to call in to tell us that. We won't put those calls on the air. Got it? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. 1-800-5800-866. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Mike. Um, yeah, have we beaten this whole uh, Kurt Cobain thing to death yet or what? Well, I, you know what? It's open phone, so people talk about what they care about, and a lot of people want to talk about Kurt Cobain. Gotcha. You know, he had a point. You know, I, I kind of got to meet him halfway, though. I mean, yeah, I agree with him. 
you know, this this whole uh, Kurt Cobain thing, you know, they're they're making a big deal about it. And it kind of seems like a, it's ironic that they're kind of making him a kind of a martyr. Yeah. If you know what I mean, they're you know they're kind of glorifying his death. When, I mean, well, yeah, we do that. You know, they do it with Elvis Presley. He destroyed himself. Well, yeah, look, I mean, these, I, these guys yeah. obviously went into themselves. They succeeded. Woohoo! And now let's forget about it. Move on. And, and it doesn't seem like their whole success made them, you know, it actually helped their life at all. You know, if they're killing themselves. Well, it certainly uh, uh, speaks against uh, trying to become rich and successful and famous. Yeah, I mean, that obviously doesn't buy him happiness, but at the same time, he was saying the genre was dying. And, uh, yeah, I work at a recording studio. I, I go to battle of bands, and you see kids that were maybe, like, 8 to 10 years old when right. he killed himself. They, uh -huh. you know, probably never even listened to music. They're totally into this stuff now. They're, they eat Kurt Cobain, they eat Nirvana up. Wow. You know, they're really into it, and they, you know, they look especially a lot more like, I want to say, the more darker kids, too. Yeah. You know, they're, I wouldn't want to say, like, you know, depressed, but, you know, like the kids that are more, you know, they don't really seem, you know, they seem more antisocial than the other kids. Yes. They they love this stuff, you know. Yeah. You know, they, they eat it up. I, I wouldn't underestimate these kids. I mean, you know, you know, I was 14 when he killed himself. I'm 24 now, you know, and, you know, it seems like people are more into it now than back then. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily true. I think uh, music has evolved since then. What was called grunge is certainly not what is popular today. Um, I think sure. that I think that uh, there's a lot more hip hop now. Very uh, e e it together too. Yeah, I mean, even for you know, and, and uh, even for I, I would say, especially for for white audiences. Uh, yeah. You know that that's who's listening. That's who's buying most of the hip hop is white kids. Yeah. It ain't grunge. I mean, no, it's, hey, look, it's sugar coated. The most bizarre know. thing is that in Seattle, two stations. At the yeah, same heard... time, came on with something called classic alternative. So they're still playing Alice in Chains twenty times a day. That's what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, well, I mean, come on! If he, if there was new music, they, I don't think they'd be doing that. See, they're still, but I, yeah, they're still bringing it back. I guess they try to. That's how you know a particular music style is dead when they start playing classic. Whatever. Yeah, when they call it classic, you know, it was ten years ago. Yeah, that means yeah. that means they ain't no new stuff. Yeah, true. Well, like I had, I had agree with him halfway, but like I said, I mean, I don't think the genre is dying though. There's still like an underground. But an underground, but see, if it's under, then it's no longer a mass form of art. True. Right. But it would still be a genre though. It, it, you know what? Big band music's a genre. Yeah. But not very popular. And bluegrass is a genre. Yeah. Not a lot of formats on the radio it's playing. It's another classification. It, well, yeah, but the, the fact is, it, it isn't popular like it was 10 years ago. Yeah, that's true. That's that's the fact, Jack. Yeah. Okay. But there's still there's still kids that are they're into this. They're, well, they're, you know what? There are kids that are into everything. There are kids that are into hula hoops. I mean, there are kids yeah, that are into yo-yos. There are kids that have been to Super Bowls. There are kids that are into uh, Easy Bake Oven. So what? So what? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't care. There might be three people playing a grunge record. Does that make it a fan? No, I'm not saying that. Right. The fact that there are still people into there were people who are into driving Edsels around town. I mean, come on. So what? Is, is, it, is it a big fad? No. I'm just saying it still is big, though. It isn't. You, you just said it's underground. If yeah, it's, uh, what does that mean if it's underground? You, you know what? Uh, Britney Spears isn't underground. She's everywhere. Oh yeah, but that's. But do you understand what underground means? Underground, black underground black. means it is a limited group. It's a cult following. Yeah. It is no longer a mass appeal form of music. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I got. The you. fact that there are some people who still listen doesn't mean it is what it was. It isn't. Oh, you yeah, proving my point by that. saying that grunge is now underground. I agree with that. It wasn't yeah. underground in 1994. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I think it was foreground. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Okay. I see the difference. Well, good. It, it took long enough. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Art on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, brother? All right, Art. Hey, Tom. I just wanted to shout out and get off this Kurt Cobain thing. It's killing me. Um, no pun intended. The, uh, the thing I wanted to bring up is uh, I work with a guy that uh, his name's Anthony, and he will not go by any other name as far as, like, Tony or calling him anything else but his full name, Anthony. I just find it aggravating, and uh, I wanted to know what you thought about well, it. Well, these are like these are people who are self-important. Self-important. Yes, these are like people. That. Yes, 
These oh, people who think names like Thurston Howell the Third sound distinguished. And, yeah, you know, I expect this kind of behavior from a woman, but I mean, from a man, and he wants to, you know, go out and party and hang out with me yeah. and a bunch of the other guys, and right. it just kills me that he won't, you know, you dare call him Tony or anything else, he goes ahead and you call him, you know, I have to call him Anthony, he'll correct you on the spot. Really? It kills me, it kills man. me. And he does it to everybody, everybody. You dare call well, him. There's, the there's a lot of people like that. Yeah, and then I just don't get He's the first person. I've it's like people in radio who refuse to call their show a show. They call it a program. So you call your show the Tom Likas program? No, it's a show. But oh, exactly. Okay. They're, 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 I used to work with a guy in Boston who called, he refused to call his show a show. He called it a program. And uh, that's just egocentric. I don't know. To me, it's, it's, come it's on. somebody that can't be real. Yeah, NPR has programs. We do shows. I just don't get it. I mean, this type of this, this type of behavior alone just aggravates. I just find it ridiculous coming from a man, an adult at that. You know, I'll just keep calling, keep calling him Tony. Yeah, you know, I do that, and uh, I had a coworker that did that, and now he doesn't even talk to her. Oh, huh? he just he just kind of yeah. like alienates her and doesn't even deal with that her. That solves the problem right there. Sean, hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Okay. Good. Um, what's your what's your qualm with the Kurt Cobain situation? Have, if you don't know what I think, why are you calling about it? Well, because I kind of know what you think, but I just... I, you know what? I'm not here to do your homework for you. You know what? You, you, oh, the least you can do is before okay. you dial this number... Here's my point. ...to know what I said. And then... I, I, well, you want me to repeat everything I just said because no, you weren't paying that, attention? I'm not going to repeat everything I just said. <laughs> okay, listen. If you're considering popular music Britney Spears and everything else that MTV is playing, then... Popular music is what people are buying. Right, according to just album sales. That's how you measure uh, purchases of music. Album yeah, sales. That's how, the most popular records are the ones that people buy. Right, but saying that there's not a following of grunge music. Grunge I didn't music say there's not a following. I said it is no longer a mass appeal format to the point where the, 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 the alternative radio station in Seattle, and plus a new alternative radio station in Seattle, they're, 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 they're doing classic alternative. Uh, Seattle, the birthplace of grunge, they're doing classic alternative. So? So where's the new alternative? The new alternative, it's not called alternative anymore. It's, the grunge was an influence on music. But it's, it's, a, but it's past. It's passe. It's done. Done. No, it just changed into it, different things. No. What? It, what, it, what the, the, the twist turned into Led Zeppelin. Is that what you're telling me? Come on. It, it, that particular Absolutely. form of music is dead. It's the twist dead. definitely turned into Led Zeppelin. It is dead. But the point is, it's dead now. Dead. Definitely not dead. Grunge is dead. Yeah, 14, hey, I have a Stop it. It's brother. dead. Don't tell me. It's dead. Brother. I have a six-year-old brother who the first book he read was Kurt Cobain's book, his autobiography. Not his autobiography. Well, that's good. Why don't you get your brother a shotgun for his birthday? Oh, that's they can look. Well. At, well, hey, you know that's that's his idol. You know, my point is, is that it's not dead. It's not dead at all. Get him a syringe. Hey, there's music that came out at that time, and it's not just Kurt Cobain. It's Pearl Jam. It's Soundgarden. Yeah, how many uh, how many albums is Pearl Jam selling these days? Five. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. I don't think so. And watch your language, you moron. Go look on the you watch your language, you moron. Oh, I'm sorry. But go look you on the do, Obviously, you don't read the papers. You haven't heard about something called the FCC. I heard about that, huh? Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I've never called the radio before. Yeah, well, yeah. But Pearl Jam is selling a lot of albums still, and they've made... Pearl Jam is not selling nearly what they were selling 10 years ago. Not Who even... Is? Not even... Call, Britney, Britney Spears is selling a lot more than she was selling 10 years ago. You can't... It's Outcast. Outcast. I'll give you. I'll give you a list. You want a list hey, of people selling albums? Yeah. Nora Jones. Hey, look it. I'm not saying who's selling albums. I'm well, you just said who is. You said who is. I'm telling you who Outcast, is. Outcast has been around since 1992. Yeah, but Outcast isn't doing grunge, and Outcast is winning Grammy awards and selling more albums than Pearl Jam could dream hey, of selling Outcast right is now. Incredibly creative. I'm not saying. All right, but that's not grunge. Said, grunge is dead. Dead. No, grunge is definitely. It not is so. It, it is dead as a grunge. doornail. It's Why people say dead as a doornail? By the hey, way. Hey, have you ever heard of the band Maroon Five? And dead, they, they, grunge is as dead as Kurt Cobain. You're right, Gary. Have Absolutely. You ever heard of a band called Maroon Five. It doesn't matter what bands I've heard of. In fact, if you're trying to show off with your knowledge of no, underground band, guess you're all. proving my point. The point is, is it's the farthest thing away from grunge that you could think That's of. That's my point. Everything's far away from grunge because grunge is dead. So what? 
So you know how many you know how many you know how many musicians. Let me give you another example. You, you, let's talk about the Rolling Stones for a second. The Rolling Stones, all the years they've been around, talk about the influences of blues and jazz and. Uh, it, it, but guess what? Blues is dead. Dead. I don't care if it influenced the Rolling Stones. It's dead. Dead. No, because of the influence, it became a part of the Rolling Stones. But it's dead. Blues is dead. Well, my, my, my definition of, of, of very popular means selling millions and millions of CDs. That's, that's popular. See, Nirvana was very, very popular. And at that time, grunge was not dead. It was very much alive, but it's dead now. That's because it was... The fact, that, the fact that somebody found their big brother's CD in the room and listened to a Nirvana record and was influenced by it doesn't mean grunge isn't dead. It is dead. No, uh, my, he didn't find my CD at all. He came to that on his own. Yeah. But, you know, I agree with you in a certain sense. I mean, if you're just talking about popular music, okay, yeah, whatever's selling is obviously popular music. But um, uh, my opinion, grunge isn't dead. Well, it's that's your opinion. Uh, in the opinion of the, the record charts, uh, it is dead. Believe me. Tom Likas. Come on. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Just a message to all the chicks right now. Excuse me, chicks. This is Scott calling on the 405 freeway. I'm about to get on the 405 south coming from the 101. Please stick your boobs out the window because I like to see them. Thank you very much. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. On the it's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Headlights on, then, ladies. Show us what you got. Show us your rack if you see our headlights on. Comedian Ralphie Maley joining us coming up here. Wide open telephones toll free at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Show. I just want to warn Ty, he's a smart man, and he's just very silly with this. I don't know. You don't want him to go to Nigeria to get $175 million. No, he sh he's, no, no, you, if you're his friend, you have to tell him no. Why? He's going to get me a new top for my Jeep and new doors, he promised me. What? He no. No? No, no, no. It's a scam. I mean, how do you know? I know because I have friends who have tried to send money and, and do this. It's not right. It's no. You have to tell them no. I, I love Tom. No. You have to tell them no. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. We are one week away from our first appearance in Portland in over five years. That's uh, coming up next Friday, one week from today, April 16th, at Barracuda. That's at 9 Northwest 2nd Avenue in downtown Portland. Now, you'll need tickets, but you can get them. Tickets are available. Just keep listening to Max 910 Talk Radio for Guys. By the way, a number of you girls have written in uh, asking to be backdoored into this event because we said uh, any uh, Portland 9s and 10s. And remember, we're not being unrealistic about our expectations. Uh, we know we're not going to get L.A. 9s and 10s. But any Portland 9s and 10s, because all the Portland 9s and 10s move to L.A. and become L.A. 9s and 10s. There are no Portland 9s and 10s that are L.A. 9s and 10s. No, they move to L.A. That's what happened. So if you are a Portland 9 or a 10, you have not left yet. And you would like to uh, come to our event uh, and not uh, just circumvent the ticket process, be backstage with the VIPs and all that stuff. Uh, you uh, sent us a picture. Now, a number of girls from Portland didn't get the idea, and they wrote in telling me they wanted to be back door to the event and never sent a picture. You're not getting in. Now, we want photographic evidence of your hotness. And if you're not uh, absolutely hot, well, you're not going to get in the back door. You can win tickets and go, but you're not going to get in. It's that simple. So uh, keep listening to Max 910 Talk Radio for guys if you need tickets. But if you're a chick and you're a 9 or a 10, we'll get you in the back door. No questions asked after we see your picture. You chicks trying to sneak in. My husband would really enjoy it. Forget it. Your husband's not getting in the back door. And nor is your boyfriend, your gay friend, your male friends, all the guys who want to sleep with you. No. They can get tickets. Just the hot chicks in the back door. That's it. <laughs> oh, and yes, I should mention that this hour of the Tom Likas Show is brought to you in part by The Girl Next Door. It's in theaters today. And they're also providing $500 in cash to a random caller that makes it on the air this hour. It's $500 in cash from The Girl Next Door, The Ultimate Guy Fantasy, starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24. It's in theaters today. We were at the screening of The Girl Next Door last night. As a matter of fact, we were on the 20th Century Fox lot. And that was worth doing just to go to the 20th Century Fox lot. We had a bunch of winners from a station contest here in L.A. who got to go. And that was a lot of fun. We had a good time. 
With us in studio, Ralphie May. Ralphie, uh, you've never been here before. It's the first no, time. It's my first time. Thanks for coming in. Oh, man, my pleasure. I, I understand that you're playing around town, and uh, the, you're with the Irvine Improv? I'm at the Irvine Improv tonight, uh, 8.30 and 10.30, tomorrow night, 7, 9, and 11. T totally cool. Now, uh, where are you from, Ralphie? I'm from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. This is a different kind of place, L.A., from Houston. I love it. I love L.A. I've yeah. been here for four years, and uh, I don't want to go back to Texas. Too much humidity. Too hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas is very hot. Very, very hot. hot. Yeah. I'm a fat guy. I'm not going back there. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> 500 pounds of love says I'm staying right here, baby, <laughs> where it's nice and cool. It certainly is nice and cool. So you live here in L.A. and you love it. I love it. I love it. I moved here um, four years ago, and uh, I lived off a of, off of Sunset for a while for a, on Gardner, and uh, it was just too many hookers, too many pimps, too much drama. So I moved up and out into what I could afford. It was off of Crenshaw and Adams. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily up, but I mean, you can still leave great. your front door unlocked and uh, yeah, yeah, place off of Crenshaw where but leave the know. keys in the car. Not a problem. No, the cops are so courteous and kind over there. It's so great. Absolutely. I got stopped once because I was a white guy in a black neighborhood. What are you doing down here? You buying drugs? No, I'm dropping off my laundry, pig. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> you know, I was with NWA. I was like, you know, after the police. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how I was. It just it, it upset you, you know? <laughs> Now, one thing we have in common with Texas here is Mexicans. we got a big oh, Mexican tons of Mexicans. population here. Yes. They're fabulous. I love they Mexican are. people, man. Really? I, I moved here. I lived with Mexicans. They're great. They're very convenient because if you ever get a Mexican dude's name, you can always just read their necklace. <laughs> it's like you look in real close. What is your name? Nomar. What kind of? And you flip it over. Ramon. Como estas? <laughs> They're fabulous, man. I mean, they can fix anything with two chiclets and a pocket knife. It's a great people, man. <laughs> They're great. Very convenient to have around. <laughs> Very convenient to have around. And they are. They're fabulous. <laughs> Mexican people are great. I would say bring more over here, but they don't need my encouragement. <laughs> now, now, what do you do when you're in town for fun? What do you do in L.A. Uh, with, uh, like at night? What do you do? I just do spots. I just do comedy spots. Comedy spots. Yeah, because I don't have time for the drama, like going up on Sunset and, uh, you know, little girls who are wanting to do blow and, and hang out with Armenians. I'm in no danger. I'm in no <laughs> danger you dirty broads all right that was cool for about a minute all right if you want to do blow and and hang out with ah okay then knock yourself out that's not for me i'd rather stay home and hang out with my dog it's a lot less drama tell me a little bit about texas now we're we're on in dallas and we got a lot of callers in dallas and i'm sure you got a lot of fans in texas yeah tell us about texas it's the it's great it's a great it's a whole other country in and of itself a guarantee uh dallas people are like it's like la with uh like three less boob jobs <laughs> It really is. It's that's how it is. They're fabulous people, man. They always have a yeah. good time. It's it's crazy. Texas is fun. It's big as hell. It's hot. It takes forever to get along. I mean, it's the weather there is crazy. I mean, it'll be winter in Amarillo and summer in Houston. It's it's stupid. Wow. It's stupid. I, I was Houston people are just just laid back and chill because it's too hot to be excited, you know. And we got we got hockey now and i don't know why i mean <laughs> texas people i mean we got too many mexicans in texas to have a good hockey team i mean all the, they all want to make snow cones you know <laughs> you know it's just like that that's just how it is i like texas people though they're good yeah how's the comedy scene in texas it's great it's yeah. great dallas houston uh san antonio austin uh producing fantastic comics right now i'm just yeah. the start of it just wait in the next five years it's the I I predict that the best comics are coming are gonna come out of heat of Texas mm -hmm. definitely Texas. Now you had a connection with uh, Kennison, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I um first time I did stand up um and got paid for it. Uh, I entered a talent show contest and the winner got to open up for Sam, in uh, at the University of Arkansas. I was living in Arkansas at the time. I was in high school and. Um, we uh, Sam on the way over there was like, kid, are you nervous? I go, well, not really. I mean, it's just jokes, big deal. You know, I did jokes a lot ago. And they're like, no, kid, there's going to be 3,500 people here, and none of them paid to see you. So I was like, oh, okay, now I'm a little nervous. He goes, kid, here's a closer for you, okay? If you have any drama, any problems up there, it's not going like you want to, and you want a big laugh to get off with, just start cussing and screaming at the audience. The more vile you are and more personal you are to them, I guarantee you, the more they'll laugh. I go, really? He goes, yeah, and it's a comedy legend, so you believe him, right? I was a 17-year-old kid. <laughs> and uh, I, did, uh, I did the – I was up on stage, and I was doing like – 
uh, the first three, four minutes was good, okay? And then I flipped a punchline and a setup, and it fell there. It just fell. And then I did another joke, and it bombed, too, because I didn't have any confidence in it. And I was just choking. I was like, uh, 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 uh like that. And I just started, fl- hey, you stupid mother effers, you couldn't get these jokes if I wrote them down for you, Ned Beatty pig banging you know, you bang your mother's, you 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 bang your you know your cousin's, you know, thirty five hundred people, boo, <laughs> boo. I'm seventeen year old kid. I start to cry on stage. Like, oh. So I leave the stage. Sam comes on stage without being introduced, no music, no big fanfare, nothing, and just comes up. Can you believe that kid coming up and talking to you good people like this? He will never be in show business ever again. I'm like, oh. You know, I've got a legend out there, the hottest comic in the country, and 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 I'm now I'm crying. Okay, I go and go to find a payphone to call my mom, collect to come and pick me up from the theater, and Bill, Sam's brother, comes up to me and goes, Sam thought that was hysterical. He never thought she had the guts to do it. It was a perfect intro. The crowd, you 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 cussed all that you needed to, so nothing he said would shock them. They love you now. You gotta come with us to the after party. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, all right. You know, I thought I had him now. Well, we go to the after party, and there's all local celebrities there, like strippers and, and DJs and stuff like, you know, local guys. And uh, Sam comes out of a room, and he's, like, hungry. And he, and he goes, kid, order some pizzas. So order from Shakey's. And they come up there in ten pizzas, okay? Sam pays for the pizza himself and then tips the guy three bags of cocaine, okay? We get a phone call 30 minutes later. Hey, y'all need more co? You need more, need more pizza? You need more pizza? We'll be right up if you need more pizza. Like that. And they were talking real fast. It was very funny. <laughs> very funny. But he's the one who told me to go to Houston. Uh, he wrote me a letter of introduction to the comedy workshop, um, and it closed about four months before I got there. And so I never got a chance to go there. So I would work at the comedy showcase in Houston at Danny Martinez's club and, and uh, as well as the hip-hop comedy stop for Sean McDonald's room and stuff like that. We're talking to Ralphie May. He's playing at the Irvine Improv tonight and tomorrow night. If you'd like to see him, you can call there for a reservation at 949-854-5459. And we'll take some phone calls for Ralphie coming up. Toll free at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Some like it. What they hundred five eight hundred Tom. Some like it. What they hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Ninety percent of the world believes in a higher form, a deity of some sort. Ninety percent of the world eats at the Olive Garden. Does that make it good food? The Tom Like It Show. Uh- the Tom Like It Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. He's our telephone number. Ralphie May is here. His, uh, his album just went platinum. There are not a lot of comedy albums going platinum these days. Nah, nah. It's it's because honestly, because I'm honest on the sh- on the on the album. I, my album is called Just Correct because I'm not politically correct. You know, I'm tired of what um, what's going on right now in America. Uh, we're giving away our rights. We're having old white men in Washington who are coming down on people like you. Uh, just for speaking your mind. You know, if you don't like this show, then this show will be taken off because this is a market-driven society, okay? If you don't get the ratings, then you don't get on the air. But you do get ratings, so people are listening, okay? And if you're worried about your little kids, then guess what? Turn it. Turn it. Go go listen to Bubble Gum if you want to. You want to, you want to, something that inspires you, makes you think a little bit, and is funny? Then Then stay with us, okay? And if not, move on. But these old white men in Washington are all upset because Janet Jackson showed a breast, a black woman's breast, is what flew the whole thing into a loop. Now, granted, it was probably the first one they've ever seen, okay? All right? I mean, where is old white men that really appreciate black women's breasts like Strom Thurmond? You know what I mean? When you need him. Come on, Strom. You kicked the bucket one year too soon. Come on, kid. You could have stopped this whole thing. I mean, we, I mean, most of those guys wouldn't be opposed to a little brown sugar once in a while. I mean, right. I've been saying for years that's exactly what the Super Bowl needed. More strippers. <laughs> okay? I mean, because most of the halftime shows stink anyway. I don't want to see Britney Spears and Aerosmith. It's degrading to both of them. Okay? I mean, he's old. She's she's too hot. He, she stinks. He used to be good. What happened? I don't want to see that put on a Super Bowl. I want strippers. It's perfect. <laughs> and now what about this Kobe Bryant case? This is in the news oh. every day now. <laughs> every day. Well, I got major problems with the Kobe Bryant case. Okay?
Okay, did okay first because people aren't being informed. Okay, this DA it was reckless. He's the same guy that a couple of years ago uh, filed manslaughter charges against a, a person who had a skiing accident and went out of control and hit somebody else by accident. Okay, and he and they lost the case, but he made you know headlines. He's just reckless. he's looking for his own career in politics. Okay, so he got Kobe Bryant. He got this little girl in there who's a little crazy, a little young. All right. And uh, and she took one for the team. Okay, good for that. All right. So he filed charges and and got this guy costing millions of dollars without thinking it all through. Like the fact there's three types of semen in the rape kit. Three. Okay. Now maybe whore's a strong word, but so that's a pretty good fit. Okay. Come on, three types. Uh, yeah. Wash your monkey. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Baby wipe it. Do something. Get rid of them gummy bears up in there and Miss Krispy Kreme. You dirty girl. Uh, that's a dirty woman. Okay. I mean front to back, woman. Front to back okay <laughs> especially the fact that there was a number three was 15 hours after the alleged incident okay yeah. Yeah, she wasn't too tore up but let's go to physical evidence okay to say i'm wrong that it's not a cracker conspiracy that those white people up in colorado aren't trying to do with the never nuggets can't by stopping kobe let's just say that there was some the physical evidence has got to back it up all they have is va uh, vaginal bruising and tearing that's all they've got okay that's all the physical evidence they have now ladies you're out there okay Think to yourself, if some man was trying to steal your little monkey, okay, if he was trying to steal it, okay, you'd fight him, right, girls? You, you, you'd claw his face, you'd scar him, you, you'd fight, okay? You ain't getting this without a fight, right? You wouldn't, like, you know, just, oh, okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll put my hand in mittens, okay? No, you'd fight him, right? And black girls, you'd pull a razor out of your uh, breast and, and cut him like you got your hair wet, okay? You know you would, okay? Black women would tear him up, okay? There's no DNA evidence in it. There's nothing underneath her fingernails. There's no scratches on him or abrasions, okay? And, and ladies, he'd have to rip your clothes off too, wouldn't he, girls? You wouldn't unbutton it like, oh, jeez, this is my first rape. You're crazy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen, all right? So let's get back to the physical evidence, okay? All right. Let's remember it was a 19-year-old white girl, okay, and a six foot eight black man, okay? All right. Hold up your left fist, okay, and then hold up your right fist and hit your thumb on your left hand with your right hand. That's how I think the vaginal bruising might have happened, okay? <laughs> All right? I mean, you can you can spit on your left hand, but it ain't fitting in, okay? Yeah. All right? That's how I think happened. And if it don't fit, you must have quit, okay? <laughs> That's what I think. I think this is all a rigmarole. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more. Ralphie May, stay right there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. I am afraid of uh, marriage. You're afraid. Oh, I'm afraid of death. I'm afraid of catching AIDS. I'm afraid of a lot. I, I like the way you list marriage in there with death and catching AIDS. They're absolutely. They're all going to end your life, aren't they? The Tom Likas Show. Yeah, the Tom Likas Show. Ralphie May tonight, tomorrow at the Irvine Improv. Call for reservations, 949-854-5459. His new DVD, uh, Just Correct, it's in storage now. And uh, you were just overseas with the USO and everything? Big yeah. Big crowds? Big crowds in the USO. Uh, we performed at Saddam Hussein's Palace. My girlfriend, uh, she's uh, also a comic. She went... Um, she went there with me. She was an opener, and uh, it was great. She was, you know, she's a Jew bride, right? And she was <laughs> went swimming inside of Hussein's pool, and she took it all like, this is so awesome. I'm a Jewish American woman, and I'm swimming inside of Hussein's pool. I'm like, baby, that's nothing. I just peed inside of Hussein's pool. <laughs> Come on, folks, you got to take the chance. What are the odds he's got that blue stuff? That fool ain't got cable. You know he ain't got no blue stuff. But in case he ever came back, I had left a little something for him. And I stole, I stole some green stuff. I mean, I stole some stuff from the palace. You got to take it. Sounds like a lot of fun, Ralphie. It was a blast. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Ralphie May. The Tom Likes Show.